999. The teenage boy speared in a freak accident on a school playing field. A 12-year-old girl fighting for her life underwater. And the emergency roadside operation for the lorry driver. Um, excuse me. All of tonight's rescues are true stories. We've sometimes used actors or stuntmen, but everything you see and hear is based on the accounts of the people involved. They've helped us to reconstruct events as they happened. Tonight on 999, a double test of courage for two men trapped under a lorry, their difficult rescue and the long road to recovery. The climber left hanging on a cliff and the astounding feat of flying needed to rescue her. And a deadly swarm of bees, how a paramedic risked his own life to save a man from being stung to death. It's extraordinary sometimes how when you think every possible safety precaution has been taken, there are still dangers that haven't been foreseen. Nobody could have predicted the bizarre accident that happened here one Easter at the Shawfields Holiday Centre in Hampshire. Our reconstruction of the events that happened show how the lifeguards on duty in the pool fought a desperate battle against time as they tried to help 12-year-old Hayley Rogers, who's played here by an actress. They needed all their skills and training that day but it needed two flashes of inspiration to save Haley's life. When I pick up a newspaper now, and there's a picture of a child on the front, and something terrible's happened to that child, it's frightening. You shouldn't take for granted that you're above any of these terrible things happening to you. Within two minutes of an easygoing Friday bank holiday to a scenario like that, is, uh, it was very surreal. You're looking out and thinking, this isn't happening, this is impossible. Haley and her family were on holiday, but it was one of those typical rainy Easters. Haley spent most of her time in the indoor pool with her best friend, Pippa. I was doing handstands, rolling ponies in the water, smacking about, smashing about. I was hot and so was Haley, and we agreed that we would go into the whirlpool because we was hot. It was a bit colder in there. In half an hour, maybe, go out and play for a little while. It's scary, really, to think that how safe we thought we were. In the morning, the little ones, my little ones, had been in that same pool, probably doing exactly the same thing. In the whirlpool, the water was moved round and around by pumps which continuously sucked the water in and blew it back out again. <laughs> As Haley ducked her head under, her long hair came closer and closer to one of the intake valves. She started kicking me. I was just about to get up and have a go at her, and I saw that she was struggling a lot, and I tried to pull her out. She wouldn't budge. I knew something was wrong, so I started to call for help. Help! No one was listening to me. So I started shouting even more. Help! Help! There were three lifeguards on pool duty that day. As they ran towards the sound of shouting, they were only too aware how little time someone can survive underwater. 
Back. Usually when somebody's in trouble, we can pull them straight out and we couldn't quite understand why, you know, she couldn't come up when we pulled. I went down to have a look to see what was up and it was then that I realised her hair was caught up inside one of the intake valves. I tried pulling her again, but I realised we might start breaking bones because of the force we were using. By this time, a minute had passed, her struggling had become quite frantic. My first reaction was to get to the pumps, turn them off, which I could have sworn would have released her. She's still stuck. Get an ambulance and get it to the centres as well. Move! It was quite frightening, realising that, you know, this is not working. My God, what's, you know, what's happening? Why can't we get her up? Her hair had twisted round with the whirlpool effect and caused a rope, a plaited rope behind the actual valve. What we had to do was get scissors, get down there and cut her out. What's going on? There's someone stuck in the whirlpool. You're joking. No. I don't know whether it was an extra sense or what. I just went straight through the reception area and ended up within, well, a single second at the pool side. I started to, to think the worst because if the strength of three or four men can't sort of free her, you think, start thinking to yourself, well, what is going to free her? I'd never really been taught to do underwater resuscitation. Um, only above water. I went down, tried mouth to mouth, and after a few goes, I realised that she wasn't receiving this properly because I, I was going down and all the air was just coming out. By then, our struggling had stopped completely and I was getting really, really worried. Two and a half, three minutes had uh, gone by now and I knew it was getting very, very serious. I had to start cutting through. It was taking a fair amount of time. I was just wishing for something, something a lot, lot sharper and quicker. Haley still wasn't getting air. John had a flash of inspiration. Realising that the mouth wasn't working, I guess that the only resuscitation would be the nose, like you do like a baby. But I did have thoughts going through my mind. Am I doing the right thing? I didn't know how many times I was doing it. Taking two breaths, one for me, one for her, down, seeing her face, still again, then back up again. I just kept on going. I knew if, I, if I'd given up, she would die. Everybody back! Everybody back! It was Paul Noble, a regular at the club, who had the second moment of inspiration. He suddenly knew where he could find a sharp knife. I'd heard people sort of talking about an, an accident in the pool and someone had got their head stuck. Obviously, you, you, your imagination starts to say, oh, my goodness, you know, what, what, whatever's happened. And then the next thing I remember was this man barging past with a carving knife in his hand. And I remember thinking, oh, my God, what, whatever is wrong, you know, what, what's, what's, what's going on? Excuse me. <laughs> Mark, it's Hayley. They say it's, she's in the pool. Come with me. Oh. Great knife! I just snatched it out of his hand, dropped his scissors, and uh, went back under and cut her out almost straight away. With one clean sweep, I actually saw the knife go up, and then she'd come popping up to the surface like a balloon. Okay, she's free! In. That was brilliant. That's what we needed. Uh, the few seconds might have made all the difference. Down, 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 down. Gently, gently, gently. Put your head, put your head. That's it, that's it. Then I had this sudden thought, is she still alive? Is she just dead? There's all this effort. I've tried worthless. Haley had spent more than four minutes Not underwater. Either. Got a pulse. Get it pulse. Get it under. Yeah. Come on. When I saw the state she was in, I thought, it's very much touch and go here. I gave two breaths, and I was absolutely amazed that she came round so quick. Blanket. You need a blanket. And that was just relief. You know, just... I started to think, all right, she's breathing, but is she brain damaged or something? You know, she's, why isn't she answering me? I was talking to her and she wasn't saying anything. I'm sorry, Mum. It was just sheer relief. All of a sudden, she was all right. It was just like, it was like the minute she was born. It was just like being given a brand new baby all over again.
one minute I was only a couple of inches from the top and then I was getting nearer and nearer and nearer the bottom. And I kept on wishing that I'd just be able to get up for this one breath that I needed to keep me alive. I was trying to let out a little bit of air at a time, but when I was shouting help, I'd block as much air as I could in my throat so that I could shout help but still have air left. And then someone was pulling, and I thought, right, they're going to get me out now. I'm going to be OK. And then they let go. And all I could see, it was like greys and blacks, and I could see this grave. And my mum and my dad, my brother and sister, were all kneeling around the grave, crying. And they made me more determined to carry on. Your life, just like all the good things and bad things that happened, and all the things that you regret, and all the things you were proud of, all like rolls into one. And you think, well, all the things I was bad, all the times I was bad and naughty, if only I'd live, and then I could make them right again. Then it just went darker and darker and darker until it went black. Hayley, Hayley, are you all right? It's Mummy, talk to me. Please talk to me. All the time I could hear my mum, but I couldn't see her. I was like half thinking that I was in heaven or something. Oh, thank you. I didn't realise it at first that I've saved someone's life. And then you started thinking about it and I've... I'm so sort of proud I'd done something like that at such an early age. It was like John's breaths that kept me alive. It's like, it's almost as if it's a part of them in me now. Because if they hadn't have bothered or if they hadn't have been there, then I would have just been dead and because of them I'm alive now. And it was just the most bravest thing that anyone could have done before. Immediately after the accident, the centre closed the whirlpool so that the pump that caused the suction could be removed to make it safe. It's a tribute to the initiative of the lifeguards that they were able to save Haley's life under such unusual circumstances. It's the first time that underwater resuscitation is known to have been used in the United Kingdom. There's still very little known about the technique and it should only ever be attempted as a last resort by a trained lifesaver. Let's hope that you're never in such an extreme situation. But there are some basic rules that the Royal Life Saving Society says will help if you're ever faced with trying to rescue somebody from the water.